हेलो फ्रेंड्स माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर सुबोध कुमार झा द टॉपिक फॉर डिस्कशन इज हाउ टू टीच पोएट्री सो लेट्स बिगिन विथ अ ब्रीफ डिस्कशन ऑन वॉट इज पोएट्री बाई जनरल कंसेंसस वी कैन से दैट पोएट्री इज द ईसेंस ऑफ ऑल लिटरेचर इट इज अ वेरी कंडेंस्ड एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ थॉट feeling and emotion a poem is usually lyrical using literary devices such as similes metaphor symbols personification and so on but it is not necessary that all the time it will be lyrical then the most important quality of poetry is that it has several layers of meaning it is also perhaps the earliest form of literature great epics of all societies are essentially stories in poetry be it the ramayana the mahabharata or the odyssey in greek even the great ancient names in literature are all poets take for example kalidas homer shakespeare dun etc now after having a brief discussion on what poetry is let's uh, talk about how to teach poetry or how to use poetry in the classroom because it's very important how we deal with a poem in our classroom the option is ours we may teach poetry in a rather rigid manner with very little creative flair incorporated this is the case when the teacher is generally the sole voice interpreter and decider of how poetry is represented and the students they don't have any role in it so they don't get involved it is very important that we involve the students in poetry class there are a lot of different ways in which poems can be introduced to students to make it relevant and interesting at the same time one way of doing this is to begin with reciting the poem only for pleasure not for meaning not for anything else just for pleasure and this recitation may be by the teacher himself or he may ask the students a few students to recite the poem one by one and then we need to follow certain steps after recitation it is important that we activate prior knowledge that is linking the poem with the prior experience of the learners students are most receptive to new learning when they can connect it to what they already know and as a teacher we have to use this rich resource poetry provides a quick and fun way to do this we also need to help our students to find out tone and mood for this we can draw the attention of our learners to the tone and mood of the poem mind it we won't tell them what is the mood of the poem or what is the tone of the poem we will just help them find them out by the way tone is the author's feelings within the poem and mood is the way the readers feel when they read the poem so we shall ask the students to jot down the tone and mood of the poem we can ask our students to read the poem silently at first and then we may ask for volunteers in the class to read the poem out loud after each reading we may ask students to revise their perception of the tone and mood of the poem if necessary maybe at the first reading the student has a different idea different perception but as different readings of the poem are there he may have to revise 
his perception of the tone and the mood of the poem. After hearing the poem read aloud multiple times, discuss with students how an oral reading changed the tone and mood of the poem based on their notes. Once they have done this, we need to establish theme because establishing the theme by helping through guiding question is very useful. Of course, we need to design certain guiding questions before we enter the class. And through these guiding questions, we can help our learners establish the theme. Of course, teachers are free to do whatever they think proper to establish themes. The perfect poem can lead to a wonderful writing reflection or discussion that allows students to construct the theme and essential questions for themselves. Then, since we are using poetry in a language classroom, an objective is to enrich the learner's language. It is very important that we explore language in a poem, as it helps teachers teach grammar in a way that is motivational or memorable. Students love to learn language item when a context is created and poems do provide context to such learning. While drill and example books might have a place in teaching and learning, a good verse livens up the process of language learning. As a teacher, we also need to focus on facts. What's fantastic about poetry is that it can bring life to otherwise dry and lifeless facts. That is why students love to create poems for mathematical operations. Most important names, places, events, and dates of historical importance. Then we also need to set a scene. It is important to set the scene before the actual teaching takes place. This would help spark discussion, curiosity, and prior knowledge, ultimately building excitement and anticipation for what is to follow. We also need to inspire our students to write, because this will be an exercise of using language. Poetry deepens comprehension and develops a level of empathy and knowledge that can be applied to real-world situations. It can help students link content areas and write something on their own. Another way of using poetry effectively in the classroom is helping the students to see new perspectives. One of poetry's powers is its ability to refocus, if not totally transform our point of view. Poetry opens students' eyes to new ways of seeing. As a teacher, it is our responsibility to ignite curiosity among the learners. Students are naturally inquisitive and there's not much more we need to do but focus their natural curiosity. And poetry can do this. More importantly, we should also help our learners derive pleasure. It is important to convince our students that one of reading's purest functions is pleasure. So, read with students for pleasure. Let's serve. Exemplify whatever we have just discussed through a sample poem. And the sample is a poem by William Wordsworth, My Heart Lips Up. My heart lips up when I behold a rainbow in the sky. So was it when my life began. So is it now I am a man. So be it when I shall grow old or let me die. The child is father of the man, and I could wish my days to be bound each to each by natural piety. Now it's time to 
apply the steps that we have just discussed. Let's see how we can activate prior knowledge with reference to this poem. We may encourage students to share what they love to watch or to do. So they will share their experiences, what they love to see, what they love to watch. We may also encourage them what they feel when they see a rainbow in the sky. We may ask them to read the poem silently and find out the tone and mood of the poem. Is it cheerful? Is it happy? Is it sad? Is it angry? Is it sarcastic, ironic, humorous? Similarly, students may be allowed to interact in pairs or groups to describe the tone, to find out the tone and the mood. They will discuss among themselves and then they will decide what is the tone of the poem or what is the mood of the poem. Once we have done this, it's time to establish themes. Children may walk in pairs or groups to find what the poem is about. Nature in general, human beings, child, father, rainbow, heart, impact of rainbow on the poet or a speaker. Then we should encourage them to find out how is this impact presented. What does this impact lead to? Thereafter, we can help students to find out the meaning of the keywords. Lips up, behold, wish, bound, piety. We can also encourage them to interact in pairs and groups using these words. We can also ask them to find out the difference between the sentence structure or different sentences. For example, my heart lifts up when I behold a rainbow in the sky. So was it when my life began. Is there any difference in the three lines? They will find out the difference in the structure. Also encourage them to comment on the use of punctuation marks, especially the use of capital marks. The child is father of the man. Why is the capital mark used for father, man, and child. We should also help students interact as to when and where do we see a rainbow. Do we see a rainbow anytime, during day, any season, rainy season, any day, or when it rains. We can also help them come out with their answer, where do we see a rainbow? We can also encourage them if anyone can write or recite a verse on rainbow or any other things in nature. We can set the scene by helping our students imagine the scene. What makes him talk about rainbow? Why is the speaker, the poet, talking about rainbow? Does he see the rainbow for the first time? Does the sight of rainbow make him remember something? What does his memories of rainbow in the past remind him? We can also help our students see new perspectives. Of course, the item remains the same, the rainbow. But can we approach it from different perspectives? We may ask them, what happens when we see what pleases us most? Does everyone respond in the same way this poet behaves? Can an ordinary object of nature lead us to think something very serious? More importantly, the learner's curiosity needs to be ignited. So, we may help them by giving them certain leading questions. Does the poet want to express or communicate something which is more than mere delight? If yes, what is that? 
why does he say the child is father of the man? And the most important thing is that using poetry in language class has two functions. Learning language and also getting pleasure in the classroom. So we can help our students discover the suggestiveness of the language and derive pleasure of their discovery. We may encourage them to write the story hidden in the poem. We may help them respond to the question, for whom is this poem? What possibly is the objective of writing this poem? We may encourage them to rewrite the poem using the same structure but changing the words, at least the keyword. This will be using language and learning to use in a new way. We can also ask them to write their own poem on any object they love to see. While exploring language and making them derive pleasure, we can draw the attention of the students to the keywords, how it is being presented. For example, my heart leaps up. Why leaping up here? And what is its association with beholding? And then rainbow. Many of us see rainbow in the sky. Why is it that this poet feels so much joy? We have to help the learners find out, discover for themselves that lips up suggests very much joy, over joy of the poet. And then why the mixing of tenses? So was it when my life began. Why the poet is talking about his past? And then, so is it now, I am a man. Now, why is he talking about present? And then, moving on to future. So be it when I shall grow old. Why this mingling of past, present and future? This is the occasion we can ignite curiosity among the students. Let them explore for themselves what does this blending of present, past and future suggest. And then what is this expression, let me die, suggests? Is the poet dying? Does he wish to die? Or does it has a suggestiveness which is very rich in its evocative potency. We also need to draw the attention of the student to the line, the most important line, the child is father of the man. How can a child become father of the man? Usually, it is an adult who is the father of a child. But here is a poet who is claiming that the child is father of the man. So what does it, this paradox, it is paradox because what we think is true is actually this is not the case here. The poet, the poet is saying something which for a normal person appears to be wrong contradictory and then his wish and I could wish my days to be bound each to each by natural piety. What does this word piety suggest here? Does it have religious overtones? When we draw their attention to different words, to different expressions, they will come to infer that it is not merely a poem about an object of nature. An object of nature that is rainbow is just a means to express something, the sense of delight and 
this sense of delight in terms of past, in terms of present and on the basis of the experiences in the past and the present, well, prediction about future. Since the poet used to derive pleasure in the past and he is deriving the same pleasure in the present, there is every chance that he will continue to derive pleasure whenever he will see rainbow in the sky. And if this is not the case, maybe the poet would like to be dead because a life without pleasure, a delight is no life at all. And this impregnates the expression, the child is father of the man. The habit that we have in the, in the childhood, it shapes our adulthood. So child in this way is father of man. That means childhood shapes manhood. This is one layer of meaning. We can also say that it's only a child that can derive this kind of pleasure. So we need childlike curiosity childlike temperament, childlike heart to feel the pleasure at seeing the rainbow in the sky. And then when we draw the attention of the learners to natural piety, all at once we have the feeling that it has the religious overtones. So looking at nature, is as reverent, as sacred as worshipping. And that's why Wordsworth is known as the priest of nature. But rather than we telling these things to the students, we should help our learners to infer these things and even more than this. After this discussion, we can say that as a teacher, it's our solemn duty to make poetry teaching a fun. And this can be done by exploring the language and thereby finding out different layers of meaning. This will give immense pleasure because the discovery of the different meaning of the same word gives immense pleasure to a learner. I hope teaching poetry in classroom can easily be associated with language learning and this can be a fun in the classroom. This is all for today and we shall meet again in our next session. Till then, goodbye, thank you.